often in knitting, there are times when you need to create live loops that are exposed at the edge of your cast on rather than a hard cast on edge. This might be because you want to pick up later and work down um, for a lace shawl or maybe for some kind of finishing technique. In any case, it's really handy to know what's called a provisional cast on, which will allow you to do that. The first one that I'm going to show you is a very simple way of doing it. You're going to take your working yarn or your main yarn and just make a quick slip knot and you're going to place that knot on your needle. That's your first stitch. Then you're going to take a second length of yarn. And you want to you know, err on the side of too much yarn. And just hold it underneath. And hold the two yarns together as you would for a continental, or for a, just a standard continental long or long tail cast on. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take the needle, dip under the waist yarn, grab your working yarn, and you've made a new stitch and it's been wrapped around the waist yarn at the bottom. Now you're going to just take the needle and go above the waist yarn, but just grab the main yarn, go back under the waist yarn, grab and pull up, and now you've got five stitches on your needle. And you're just going to continue doing that until you've got as many stitches as you need. Later on, once you need to unravel your knitting, you can just pull this waist yarn out and each wrap around the waist yarn will create a new stitch, which you can catch on a circular needle as you, do, as you go. An even easier way to make this cast on happen is to take your waist, or to take your main yarn, make your slip knot, put it on your needle, and rather than using a waist yarn for the cast on, you can use the cable of a small circular needle. So hold it just as you would for a waist, piece of waist yarn, and go under and over, under, over, under, and over. And then later, when you're ready to pick out your stitches and knit, you can just slide your needle to the end and be ready to work back in the other direction. Another method of casting on calls for using a crochet hook. What you're going to do is you're just going to make a simple chain out of waste yarn. And by the way, waste yarn, you want to typically use something that is pretty smooth and that isn't fuzzy at all so that you won't have any trouble unsticking later when you need to free up your stitches. So you're just going to take your crochet chain and you want to chain on as many or probably more than, uh, than stitches that you need so that you have a little bit of room for error to play with. If you take a look at your chain, you can see that on the right side of the chain, you've got the little series of interlocking V's that you're used to seeing. And on the back side, you've got these little bumps that sort of bridge two loops. So here's a bump, here's a bump, here's a bump, here's a bump. And we're going to work into those to pick up some stitches. So take your yarn, or take your crochet chain, take your needle in your right hand, pass the tip of the needle from the front to the back through that loop and only that loop, grab your main yarn, and pull it through. Now the next bump is right here, and we're just going to do that again. Next bump, pull through again, and pull through again. And you definitely want to make sure that you're picking up that bump and only that bump, because if you pick up anything else, you won't be able to unravel the chain neatly. So when, you come, when it comes time to work back at the other end of the work, you're going to unravel your chain. And what I've done is I've just, when I finished off my chain, I just simply passed the, the tail end of the yarn through and pulled tight. Um, and I put a knot in that end of the tail because that will tell me which end to start unraveling from since the work will only unravel in one direction. So what you want to do now is just unpick, unpick that tied off end. Make this happen. There we go. You're just going to unravel and these coils would show as just live loops at the end of your fabric. The third way to create a provisional cast on is also with a crochet hook. So you're going to want to make a slip knot in your waist yarn here. Take your knitting needle in your left hand and take your crochet hook in your right hand. And you can use a crochet hook that's about the same size as your knitting needle, but it's not especially critical. Place the slip knot on the crochet hook and put the, the working end of the yarn, here's the tail of the yarn, but the working end of the yarn should go to the back of the work. So bracing the needle with your left hand, you're going to want to take your crochet hook, make a yarn over, and pull it through 
the slip knot that was on the crochet hook. And then you're going to move your working yarn to the back of the knitting needle again. And you can see that you, we've cast it on one stitch. So again, you have a stitch on the crochet hook. You're going to go over the knitting needle to grab that working yarn and pull through and then slide the tail to the back of the work. And you can continue doing this until you've got as many stitches cast on as you need. And then later, when you go to unravel the work, all you need to do is just unravel. When you, all you need to do is just unravel from the end that you first started at, and you'll have a nice, neat row of exposed live loops. So that's how to make a provisional cast on. Continue knitting daily every day by joining the online Knitting Daily community and receive a free newsletter five times a week filled with step-by-step -step techniques, inspiring reader-contributed stories, and free patterns. It's about knitting all the time. KnittingDaily.com